Hello, my friends. So today I'm going to use a little bit of the Yoga Vashishta and the Bhagavad Gita to address the most open question in science, which is, what is the universe made of? And many years ago, I was at a conference where this discussion was going on between cosmologists, physicists, scientists, neuroscientists, etc. And there was a mathematician from Russia, in fact, who said, there's no such thing as a universe, it's a human construct. And I realized he, that he was on to something. The universe we experience is a perceptual activity uh, of consciousness through the human mind, the conditioned human mind. So the universe that we experience, everything, stars, galaxies, everything, is an amalgam of modalities of uh, uh, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, uh, modified forms of consciousness. But uh, the universe that we experience is a human universe based on our perceptual activity and interpretation. So there's no such thing as the universe. In fact, there are as many universes as there are sentient beings. So let me quote first from the Yoga Vashishta, uh, which is uh, beautiful here. In everyone's consciousness, there's a different idea of the world. Death and other such experiences are like cosmic dissolution, the night of cosmic consciousness. When that comes to an end, everyone wakes up to one's own mental creations, which are the manifestations of one's ideas, notions, and delusions even as the cosmic being creates the universe after cosmic dissolution, the individual creates his own world after death. In truth, the cosmic mind, the personal mind, and the infinite space are all of one substance, pervaded by the infinite consciousness. Therefore, regardless of what you have created, you can create as many worlds as you like. We create worlds as the natural expression of our own being. In other words, there are multiverses. First of all, each individual human has their own universe with leaky margins and other hum with other humans. But then every sentient being has their own universe depending on their perceptual apparatus. And so there are as many universes as there are sentient beings. So now we get to the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, I'm now going to read to you from um, chapter 11, Vision of the Cosmic Form. So when uh, Arjuna, uh, who's now being educated by Lord Krishna, who represents, uh, who represents cosmic consciousness, he said, Arjuna wants to know the mystery of the universe and what the cosmos really is. And so he says, out of compassion, you have taught me the supreme mystery of the self. Self, through your words, my delusion is gone. Oh, uh, Krishna, you have explained to me in detail about the origin and dissolution of all beings, and also the imperishable greatness of consciousness. You have told me the supreme glory of cosmic consciousness. I now wish to see your cosmic manifestation. So uh, Krishna um, um, is going to respond soon to Arjuna who says, Oh Yogeshwara, Yogeshwara means the Supreme Yogi. If you think that I'm capable of seeing your cosmic manifestation, then reveal your imperishable self to me. And uh, Sri Krishna said, Behold my opulences with hundreds and thousands of divine and multicolored forms. O oh, Arjuna, uh, I am now going to reveal to you my cosmic self. Behold the different manifestations of Adityas, Vasus, Rudras, Ashwini, Kumaras, Maruts. Behold the many marvels for which no one um, has seen before. I'm going to give you transcendent eyes so you can see me as 
I really am. Behold in me the whole universe of the moving and the unmoving, standing, standing together here in my body, along with many marvels. But you're not capable of seeing the cosmic form with your physical eyes. You will only see one form <laughs> through your conditioned mind. Therefore, I grant you the divine sight to see my divine opulence. So, what does Krishna reveal? He reveals his supreme cosmic form with innumerable mouths and eyes, with infinite marvelous sights, with divine ornaments, possessing divine weapons, wearing uh, celestial gardens, garlands, clothed in, in celestial garments, anointed with divine perfumes. The cosmic form of um, Krishna was full of wonder, dazzling, boundless, and facing on all directions. If a thousand suns were to rise all at once in the sky, even the brilliance of that light would hardly match the splendor of this form. There in the body of cosmic consciousness, in the body of the God of Gods, the son, and son of Pandu glimpsed the whole universe in many universes with its many divisions converging in one place. Overwhelmed with amazement, with the hair on his body standing on, on end, Arjuna bowed before the Lord and said, I can see now in your body all the devas. So remember, deva means the perceptual activity, which is divine, that allows you to see different forms. I can see all the living ent entities assembled here. Brahma seated on a lotus. Brahma is the creator. Shiva and sages and celestial snakes. I see your infinite forms on all sides with countless arms, stomachs, mouths and eyes. See all these are different perceptual apparatuses, which are modified forms of consciousness that reveal infinite forms. I saw no, I see no beginning, no middle, no end in this form. <clears throat> I can see you with your crown, um, a mass of blazing radiance that is difficult to see. Your radiance blazes like the effulgent fire and the sun and is immeasurable. You are imperishable, the supreme being to be known. You're the ultimate resting place of all. You're the imperishable guardian of the eternal dharma. In my opinion, you are the everlasting, infinite being. I can see you without a beginning, middle or end. Your power is infinite. You're endowed with infinite arms. See, each sentient being, infinite arms, infinite eyes, everything. The sun and moon are your eyes. Your mouth is the blazing fire. With your own radiance, you burn the universe. O oh, Mahatman, the Supreme Self, you alone pervade the space between the heavens and the earth and in all directions. On seeing your marvelous and terrible, terrific form, the three worlds tremble. The host of devas enter your being, filled with fear, some praise you. Great sages and seers sing and praise you with sublime hymns. The rudras, adityas, vasus, sadhya, sadhyas, vishwas, ashwins, maruts, gandharvas, yakshas. They are all different manifestations of sentient beings, including, you know, archetypal beings. Uh, they all behold you with wonder and and amazement. The worlds tremble upon seeing your immense form with many mouths and eyes, many thighs, feet and stomachs and many terrible tusks. O oh, Vishnu, when I see your form touching the sky, blazing with multiple colors, with open mouths and large shining eyes, my heart trembles in fear and I find neither courage nor peace. When I see your fearsome mouths with tusks, which blaze like the fire at the dissolution of the worlds. I'm unable to see the directions and I'm not comfortable. Be gracious to me. And so, just as the gushing rivers flow towards the ocean, all the heroes of this world enter into your flame, just as moths rush into a blazing fire and are destroyed, so are also all beings destroyed, recycled, and created. 
devouring the worlds on every side. With your flaming mouths, you smack your lips, your fiery rays, which fill the whole world with their radiance and scorching it. O Supreme Lord, tell me who you are. So fierce in form, I bow down to you. Have mercy upon me. I desire to know you, the primal self. So Krishna says, I am the mighty time that destroys the worlds and is now engaged in that. Even with your participation, none of this can survive. Therefore, rise. Okay, so what the heck is going on? In this little poem, in this chapter, chapter 11, and there is more which I will share with you. What is basically Arjuna is seeing is sentient beings experiencing different universes because every universe is a projection of cosmic consciousness through what we call, or Aldous Huxley calls, called the reducing valve. You can't see everything simultaneously. So a sentient being sees it through a particular lens of, uh, of uh, the conditioned mind and the conditioned perceptual apparatus that is the biological correlate of that conditioned mind. How many universes are there? As many as sentient beings. But in that glimpse of Krishna taking his cosmic form, um, um, what Arjuna sees is innumerable divine and diabolical manifestations. Creation, destruction, dissolution, resurrection, all happening simultaneously in the entangled, in the entangled supreme self cosmic forms. There's no one form and there's no one appearance of the universe. The universe appears, is experienced and dissolves in each sentient being based on their biology and perceptual apparatus. But in the cosmic um, non-local ultimate reality, all of these universes exist simultaneously. So slowly we're getting to closer to truth, okay? And uh, I will continue with these. I'm actually going to be traveling now for the next several weeks internationally and nationally. So because there's a lot to pack, I'm only carrying two little books, Bhagavad Gita and Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And uh, I will use those sutras to share insights with you. Thank you.